such a fun, I want to say really ridiculous movie, but we have to hear it from you. Is what initially drew you that you want to be a part of this project? I mean, the movie uh, was. Oh yeah, go ahead, Bill. Oh, sorry, Cal. Um, well, so our mutual longtime friend uh, Luke Roberts is one of the two writer directors on the movie. Um, and he sent the script to both of us first. We were the kind of the first ones that he sent the script to, um, knowing that we have an interest in history as well as uh, I think they had kind of written the roles for us. Um, and I at least would have immediately read it and said, hey, guys, the script is super solid. It's interesting. It has a lot to say right now right. about uh, masculinity and men. And, and, uh, and I'd love to talk to you about it, see how we get this made. And that was over um that was over a Italian food dinner at Dantana's, and then the rest is history. I mean, we made this a while ago now, but it's just been an awesome ride since. Same answer oh. applies to what? Is it the same answer applies to me? Oh. <laughs> most most excellent. Now, you know, um, being a history buff, you know, th this film reminds us of the, you know, the Alexander Hamilton versus Aaron Burr duel that's uh, famous uh, in in U U.S. history. You guys, uh, you know, try to recreate a, a duel similar to that. Do you who do you guys think you guys actually represent Alexander Hamilton or Aaron Burr in a situation like this? <laughs> I don't know that that. Uh you know, we really represent any particular duelists uh, so much as uh, just what it means when a friendship uh, falls apart at the level that it does and what one is to do about it if indeed they care at the level that these guys, uh, you know, uh, say they care about each other. I mean, it's, that's one of the through lines of the movie is what what is to be done when things fall apart uh, from, you know, the highest level. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I, I don't know that I ever thought about uh, embodying a particular duelist. Did you, Dylan? I think we embody all men who have dueled in history, um, insofar as we are going to the lengths to make sure that it takes place in the pitfalls of doing so. I mean, I think this is a story that has. Uh, broached a topic that not many narratives tell, which is that in is an extreme situation as a duel. What are the thoughts and motives going in that can make people either insecure, scared, uh, angry, or happy about it? Um, and I think that's why we represent them both. I agree. Yeah, because this this uh, this form of uh, you know gilded violence is at once the most beautiful and most horrendous thing about uh, the male character uh, convergently across time, across nations. And uh, it was just fun to explore that. I know. And not, not to mention, it's amazing that with the divisiveness and, you know, the hostilities that, uh, that are happening with people today that we don't see duels <laughs> like this uh, in reality. Or do we? <laughs> I mean, but not even. I think I, I want to say not even five, six months ago, there were two members of Congress who challenged each other to a duel, or one of them challenged the other, who didn't rise to the occasion. But it was funny in our post-production cycle, dueling became weirdly more prevalent in media in general, and it was we all we were all kind of laughing. There is a there is this thing that happens when you write something you really love, where you start to see it everywhere in the real world around you. You're kind of like manifesting it, um, and that was certainly happening with Dueling. So, so so true, so true. Now, um, one of the things to remind is that this is actually a comedy, but you two guys play it so seriously in 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 your roles. Could tell tell me at each other on, in your roles uh you, bro you broke up uh, for a second at the end there but i think I, I got most of it um i think in the end the contrast is always what makes uh the humor uh you know at its best what 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 sells it um and what validates it 
And so the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. these two, these two characters are, um, and so they're so hell bent on resolving this in this absurd way, but being so serious the whole time, I think is what makes it funny, that kind of situational comedy. But that's why I think dark comedy is often so, uh, so powerful is because, you know, the humor serves to juxtapose the very real stakes. And I think that's, uh, that's comedy at its best for me. It's why I love the McDonough brothers so much, you know, in Bruges and, and the guard and, uh, and films of that ilk, uh, because the contrast is what makes it powerful. And if you had everyone in the movie, uh, playing it for laughs, um, I think it would potentially fall flat and no one really does. Obviously everyone, everyone's character has, uh, as a severe and serious motivations, but then there are some characters that are, uh, you know, that are naturally funny. And I think that, that, that only helps. Yeah, and, and Callan and I have spoken about this in previous interviews as well, but, you know, I, I think the four main boys and Abby are real human beings, right? They are young, they are uh, they make mistakes, none, none of them are either good nor bad, they're just real human beings living currently. Um, but the second that Patrick Warburton and Burr comes on the screen, you're getting progressively wilder characters at, all the way up until the end. Virtually everybody is this caricature and is almost, you know, we've joked like a mythical or fae creature. They they start to kind of entice the boys into this idea. Um, and then when Abby jumps in at the end, she's really seeing it with fresh eyes for the first time saying, what the fuck is going on? Um, so I think that that's part of the humor, right? Is again, like Callan said, the juxtaposition of those two aspects of it, the very real humans in the center of this very strange circumstance and these people who are, are almost cartoonishly themselves. Funny, when I was in English school, I, I, when, when they taught us the word juxtaposition, I never thought I'd use it, use it as much as I do in the life of an now. actor. <laughs> it comes up all the time. I like to say it. So, in 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 the end, which of these rules that uh, displayed in the film you found most ridiculous? Mm. Did you hear me? Which of, which of the in rules? The end, which, which rule? Yeah, that that you found most ridiculous, in your opinion. I like the cane on the back thing. Always makes me laugh. Um, oh, the rule. That they do. If they agree, you get to strike the uh, the other person with a cane on the back a certain amount of times. I did not know that that was real rule. Every time I hear that line, it still makes me laugh. Um, and of course, the slapping with the glove is hilarious as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, many of the the old Irish code duello rules might, by modern standards, be considered uh, ridiculous. But uh, certainly, the slapping with the glove, um, I I found extremely fun on set. So even though it's the one that stands out to me. I'm also very glad it was there because it just meant that I got to smack Dylan across the face with a uh, a leather glove, which we did for real. Oh, it was it was it was for real, not not acting, eh? <laughs> well, I mean, it was necessarily both, but I did get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should return the favor one of these days. Oh, we I did. did we, we did a press junk it the other day. <laughs> 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 I want to see that, by the way, because that, that was a proper, you gave me a good one. It was on target. Dude, we, I mean, that was years of pent up anger. <laughs> Practicing it in the mirror. Got a little dummy of me there. Here's his little beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, most excellent. And uh, if and if if you two actually have to duel in, in reality, what would be your weapon of choice? Yeah, we've talked about this. Um, I I would do probably a shield and a one-handed weapon. That would be, to me, I feel like that's the most intimate, um, but also the best show of martial prowess. Um, if you can block yet also strike at weak points, that to me is, I feel like, the best way to, to embody that idea. I, I I do agree. I think in the end that you having the sort of at least a sword and buckler situation just means that um, when the average duel between average folks 
happens, the exchanges are going to be disappointing and quick if you don't have uh, a shield of some sort. I really feel like it um, it does it does increase the likelihood of a spectacular bout for anyone who happens to be watching. Um, but I, I reckon I'd probably do just uh, just sabers. I don't know how I feel about the foils that uh, um, that were so often the weapons of choice or in fencing. Uh, I'd want you know something a little sturdier. It gives you a good clang. You can get a good report back and forth. Um, and uh, I did mean report as in the sound, not the rapport. Just in case anyone watching, uh, you know, calls me on that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, either that or spears. I feel like there's there's a, there's there's not enough uh, uh, some you know spears i feel like uh you could get some real real artistry going on there and i was always very good at spinning broomsticks when i was a kid so i feel like i i remember oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're a you're a bow staff weirdo <laughs> i was i was uh <clears throat> Both excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for carrying this conversation with us for the duel. It is it is a very, very funny movie, and everyone needs to check it out. Thank you very much.